Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining our EDC Coffee Chat. We are excited to have Donya Allward from the Red Lion in Port Angeles join us this morning. Uh, we really appreciate her doing this and being here, especially since she has been out sick lately and still has a cold. Uh, but they have a lot of exciting things going on in Port Angeles, and uh, she and we want to share that terrific news with you. So um, with that, I just want to ask that people put themselves on mute. I will do that for you if you aren't already on mute, but we just don't want to inadvertently pick up any background noise. Um, if you have any questions of her or want to clarify something, if you'll put your question in the chat or alternatively, you can raise your hand. We like this to be fairly interactive. So again, Donya, thank you so much. Um, and we will have this recording up on our website later on today if, it, if you want to share it with anyone. So uh, Donya, please take it away. And thanks again for joining us. Thank you for having me, Colleen. <clears throat> Excuse me, I apologize. I sound like a 80 year old smoker, but um, I have teenagers who like to pass germs around. So, um, thank, um, so thank you for having me this morning, Colleen. I want to share all the exciting stuff that we have taking place down at the hotel um, and the restaurant. Um, let me see if I can share my screen here. I'm also going to apologize. I have a 12 week old puppy. So if you hear some barking in the background, um, I'll try to keep that to a minimum. <clears throat> so this is uh, basically an overview of the exterior of the property and basically starting with um, a large overview of what we're looking to do. Um, I'll start with the east parking lot. Um, so no change there. Um, the guest room renovations. The inside of the building has started to take place um, and will actually um, be complete um, before summer this year. We're starting on the bathrooms um, actually next month. So the guest rooms, the exterior renovation um, will happen likely starting in 2024 with the um, actual exterior of the hotel aspect of the building. Um, so um, we have started with the um, bathrooms, as I said, we'll start next month, and then the entire interior of the hotel will be done then. Um, we have started on some of the exterior. We re roofed this past summer, um, and which I'm sure you saw happening and taking place. Um, so that part will be the first phase of the exterior of the building. The second set phase of the building will be the meeting facility um, and the restaurant renovation, which is gonna kind of turn it into um, really, um, for lack of a better term, I've been calling it a campus. Um, so the meeting facility will, um, the meeting rooms will grow upstairs and we'll kind of take that awkward L shape that we currently have in that um, space and make it a true square um, to make it more um, accessible and easier to hold functions and meetings in there. And then we will also um, expand out into um, rooftop dining, as you can see to the left there um, and do uh, patio seating as well. Um, the um, part of the design is a coffee kiosk right out there in front. So really turning the storefront of the restaurant to face Lincoln Street, um, whereas now you, it's kind of that awkward. Um, do you enter from the north or the south between the restaurant or between the hotel and the restaurant or out front? Um, the current lobby will turn into the fitness center um, with some additional smaller offices. Um, but the front desk and actual check-in area um, will take, will be moving over to um, where the current um, restaurant is at. Um, so you'll check in basically seeing the view, which is really what sells the, the hotel rooms. Um, and seeing that we'll have some soft seating in the lobby and a, a lobby bar. Um, and then um, the major thing that's going to happen that's going to take some some work is I mean all that's going to take some work but the parking 
lot is not necessarily going to look like a parking lot. We're trying to make it more like a park-like setting and incorporate it into the city pier. So you can see in um, this is the exterior, incorporating the waterfront trail, um, stairs here, lots of greenery. Um, this is going to be intended possibly for um, food trucks, um, like a pavilion gathering space for, um, you know, when we do concerts on the pier on Wednesday, we can have some food trucks come in there and have um, food options available, um, as well as obviously working with the Dungeness Crab and Seafood Festival to ensure that we can still somewhat accommodate the, the Crab Festival and its event. You can, this is a better um, overview of what the um, topical plan looks like. So you can see lots of greenery. The closest entrance to Railroad Avenue will become a green space. Um, there's benches and seating here. Um, talk of fire pits and gathering spots. You can see these um, on the exterior of the lobby here um, and really making this more of um, kind of a circular drive, more welcoming, um, and then really kind of enclosing that pool area so it doesn't look like a I mean, it is a pool in the middle of the parking lot, but trying to make that a little more private and um, upscale there. Um, you can see here, if I go back to slide three, this is what the um, upstairs meeting spaces is potentially going to look like. Um, excuse me, this is downstairs. So this is the current dining room. There's some offices here, potential breakout space, um, the lobby area that will be, um, um, where you check in at the front desk. And then this is the meeting space. There is, this has been updated a little bit since these designs have been presented to us. The, the meeting room too, this is going to bump out a little bit, like I said, to get rid of this L shape. So okay. this is the meeting space here, this is, as I said, the design is going to kind of bump out a little bit here. Um, and then the back of the house, the rooftop dining, and then the enclosed deck that'll look out over the Strait of Juan de Fuca there. Um, so that's, um, and if you, there is another um, slide that shows the finishes to the meeting space um, that I sent to Colleen. I don't know if you have that one or not, Rebecca. So this is the, um, the meeting room finishes. Um, you can see, uh, the downstairs room, the peninsula room has already been finished. If you've been to the hotel in the last two weeks, we did finish that. We'll start upstairs um, with some of these finishes um, this this next month, in addition to the bathrooms. Um, some of these were just carpet samples. We did go with um, the bottom left-hand carpet sample. I've always had a, I don't, I don't know why, ballroom carpet or hotel room carpet has to be so busy, but um, it actually does look really good in there with the colors. Um, so they've done a, um, you know, obviously I'm not a designer because um, I wouldn't have picked any of these, but it does look really well um, and does go really well with the, the nautical theme of the hotel. Um, so come by any time to see the peninsula room and you'll see what the, um, and that's the downstairs smaller meeting room and you'll see what the upstairs meeting room will look like. Um, can you go to page two? I bet they have it so busy. So if something spills and gets dirty, you don't see it as easily. Yeah, that's that's a hundred percent. Um, so then these are some of the lighting fixtures um, that we're looking for um, or moving towards. The um, um, one C is what we have in the ballroom. Um, we're looking to do a couple of different things in the. Um, uh, actual restaurant space downstairs um, that will be more nautical themed closer to the one A's um, and we did have we already have new chairs in there that's um, we did pick two C is what we went with for the chairs so um, all the meeting space aspects are getting updated as well the third phase of the renovation of the of the hotel itself is the back building um, which um, is the exterior entrance so really we have two completely separate products from an interior hotel um, to an exterior motel. Um, and so we've tried to, um, you know, utilize both of those buildings um, really for two different market segments. 
And so what we're going to do with that back building is turn it into more of a, a glamping um, type uh, uh, feel. Um, there's going to be hooks on the wall, um, places to hang your bikes. Um, there's going to be extra storage for whether it's your snowboard or your skis, um, your hiking gear. Um, there will be a larger fridge in those rooms for some of the extended stays um, that we have um, staying with us um, with the construction crews that we have coming in. Um, so really making that more um, accessible and what we're really looking for so we can, um, you know, target that market as well as target the, you know, uh, to um, Judge Taylor's um, comment at the beginning, you know, the higher end conferences and, and what we're looking to towards the main building with the view of the water. So really, you know, we, we've got two separate markets that we're going after and trying to accommodate. And so how would you describe those two separate markets, Danya? So um, the first one really is a group market segment. So um, as um, Judge Taylor had described earlier, you know, one of the things that we've tried to do, um, I, you know, just to give a little bit of background, I've been associated with this property in some form or capacity for 20 years. Um, I started while I was um, going to Peninsula College and I became the front office manager and then I was the director of sales. So I, I did do the sales aspect for about five years before I had the opportunity to work remote for Red Lion Hotels. Um, but from the director of sales aspect, what we're trying to do is really target um, the smaller associations, board meetings, um, retreats, um, and really targeting those types of um, associations and corporate group. And that will focus on the main building with the views of the water, um, the higher end finishes, um, and then in addition to the meeting space and trying to um, draw them here for field hall as well. Um, the second um, building is more of the transient market. So we're looking for the, um, you know, the outdoor enthusiasts who aren't necessarily, you know, super gung ho to, you know, sleep in a tent for three nights, but still want to experience the outdoors, whether they're biking or hiking or kayaking, skiing, snowshoeing, whatever they might be doing. And all that space will have, um, um, place to store their equipment. So they don't obviously have to leave it on their cars. It also targets what we call the Smurf market, um, which is a social kind of, of market. So we're talking Dry Hill um, events, um, the BMX events that come to town, they'll be able to put their bikes um, in the rooms, um, you know, from the marathon to the Big Hurt to, um, you know, all those um, outdoor events that take place, those rooms were really targeted to um, that type of um uh, a person who's staying. And SMURF stands for Social, Military, Education, Fraternal, um, Social, Military, Education, Fraternal, and Entertainment is what it stands for. So um, that's, uh, we have five market segments that um, in hotel lingo. So you've got group corporate, you've got association SMURF, tour and travel, which are the big tour vans or tour buses that you will see coming through town and then teams. So basketball, baseball, football, cross country, all of those things that, um, so really trying to um, diversify who we get here and, and really working on um, accommodating all of those markets. So all in all, would you say it's more of a higher end market in general that you're trying to attract? From a group perspective, yes, um, that it's really, um, we wanna attract those people during the off season because peak season, um, you know, if you've any of these conversations that I've had before, um, you know, it's, we're at, we're at capacity really as a, as a community when it comes to lodging and even when it comes to, to dining and, and recreation, you know, um, there's weights that, you know, all of the outdoor recreation areas on the Olympic Peninsula, it's hard to find somewhere to eat without a two hour wait during the summertime. Um, we really um, are our focus from a hotel perspective is really to try to extend our season and try to push it out um, in the off season and going after those um, um, association and corporate business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we do have quite a bit of blue collar business um, from the port. Um, you know, that's 
the port is our, our largest, um, uh, what we call preferred corporate account from all of the, the um, different industries within the port that stay at the hotel. So, mm -hmm. Longshoremen, um, longshoremen, and uh, when Polar Express comes and that kind of thing. Yeah, and all the, the topside ship repair and mm -hmm. all the contractors that come with that, in addition to Westport and Platypus and now um, uh, Bricks. Um, so we've got quite a bit of, of, of business there. And then of course the hospital. Um, so, and I mean, that's, you know, balancing that, right. So we're, we're balancing mm -hmm. the color workers and then we're balancing the, trying to get the doctors in and, and, uh, that's a little bit higher end than, you know, you're, and I know I've been working with Staby craft. They're having all their distributors from the West coast come to see their manufacturing facility. So yep, I know they're staying be... with us this week. Yeah. 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 So, Great. Um, yeah, so it's um, it's a it's not really just one particular market. It's you know we're we're attacking all of those markets, and I have a, a great sales team at the property that that um, is uh, trying to make that happen. So great. Let me see if I can. Does anybody have any questions? Hey, Donia, oh, this is Rebecca. Mm -hmm. You said that, um that you were maybe even going to open like a fish shop outside well so is that the, a dream or what's that where the coffee kiosk is located on the on the first plans that we had um reviewed my um my spin or my um recommendation to the um owners was to not necessarily do a coffee kiosk I think that Port Angeles and this is just my opinion is saturated with coffee um, shops and so I um, you know we get a lot of questions on where do we get fresh seafood uh, in the summertime and growing up here I remember being able to go to Hag and Hag and seeing the you know that was in the landing there on the bottom floor next to um, smugglers you see in the lobsters or the and obviously lobsters aren't native to um, Washington, but the crab and all that stuff and being able to go in and getting fresh fish, that sort of thing. Um, and really that's not, obviously we can't accommodate that with hotel guests because we don't have full-size kitchens, but just another draw to bring people into downtown. And really that speaks to what Port Angeles is all about. So that's, that's my, um, was my recommendation. Um, whether they take my recommendation or not, I don't, I don't know that they will, but that's what I suggested that they do. I love it. I think it'd be <laughs> terrific. And can you share where your ownership group is located and sure. how many other red lines they own? So we're owned by BHG Hospitality. Um, they don't have any other red lions. Um, most of the hotels that they own are, I'm sorry, they have one other red lion um, in Portland. Um, most of the hotels that they own are um, either um, Marriott or um, IHG. Um, and um, they're mostly in Oregon. They're based in Lake, Lake Oswego. We're managed by Coho Res, um, which is based out of Vancouver. Um, and that, uh, how they got connected is Joseph Malaris, who was the general manager in Port Angeles in 2005, from 2005 to 2008, um, and was associated with Red Lion for a long time, um, works for Coho Res. And so that's how BHG and Coho got connected. So Joseph is um, our regional manager for the property. Um, so that's how we're connected. Gotcha. And um, I know a little bit about franchising um, and the the requirements to be part of a Red Lion chain versus a Marriott versus, you know, some other or not. Can you talk about that? And also branding? I understand you've got potential branding change coming up. Um, yeah, we do have potential branding changing coming up. I think in um, uh this market, um, I'm not sure that a brand is necessary. So where as you have a, a ton of competition in a bigger market, it's important to have that brand flag behind you. Um, but really, um, besides us and a couple other properties, 
there isn't um, a big brand push in Port Angela. So um, I don't have any specifics, but I wouldn't be surprised if we just went independent um, and we're just um, you know, very generic Port Angeles Harbor Hotel. I don't, I don't know that that's what it'll be, um, but that's my, uh, I think that's the direction we're moving just based on the market that we're in. Gotcha. Interesting. I've worked with Hilton and a couple other chains in the past when they were looking at um, at properties and looking at expansion into Squim or Port Angeles. This mm -hmm. was back in uh, you know 2005 and six, um, and so it was really interesting to understand their metrics and how they look at a community and. Um, and yeah, anyway, we just didn't have the amount of um, uh, occupancy rate that right. they wanted during the, re the week in order to invest and build. Right, and, and that's really the challenge is the occupancy, it all comes in that four month window, right? So mm -hmm. how do you sustain that for the remaining eight months of the year? Mm -hmm. So. Um, so. We've got a couple questions in the chat, Danya, if you sure. want to answer those two. Um, sure. How many people are employed at the hotel? So it um, is usually between, um, like right now, I have 43. Um, but in the summertime, that goes up to, I think I had nine, up to 90 this past summer. Um, just based on the fluctuation of, you know, um, housekeeping staff, front desk agents, um, servers in the restaurant, um, so that um, usually we have a core of about 40 people. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, usually hotels stay flagged because of the national reservation system. Do you see that red line national reservation system does not help? Um, it does help to some degree. Um, but there's other options out there to, I mean, Expedia, um, hotels.com, they're all, owned, well, they're all owned by Expedia really. Um, now, um, that's really the main reservation um, platform for us. It's called OTAs, Online Travel Agents, and they, um, you know, 80% of our business comes from that. Um, so, uh, it, Red Lion doesn't necessarily have the national push that Hilton has um, or Marriott. And so that's when we, you know, are looking at flags to the franchise fees that cost to be part of that franchise. Does it make sense? Um, you know, are we still going to be seen on Expedia as an independent brand versus, you know, paying the, the royalty fees to Marriott or Hilton? Um, and is that going to increase our occupancy? Probably mm -hmm. not. So that's why we're looking at that. How much are the royalty fees by percentage would you estimate? For a franchise or for the commission that we pay to? Both, both. Um, royalty fees are about 7%. Um, and then commission to um, our online travel agents is usually negotiated on a brand level. Um, and so um, it runs anywhere from 17 to 20%. So wow. um, it's it's an expensive way to do business for sure. So so if you want to help out a local hotel and you've got family coming or something, the better way to do it for our local economy is to reserve directly, call either directly. through their own web, okay, calling rather than the website? Um, website website or calling. There's a, okay. There are fees associated with both. The cheapest way to do it is send me an email. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Um, Put your um, email in the chat for everyone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I might regret saying that. <clears throat> yeah. So. And so do you, is there some rule like you can't offer better rates directly from the website than what the OTA um, offers online? Oops, sorry. Um, that's, it depends on what your contract is with the OTA. Um, so if we, um, the way we get around that is if we offer membership rates. So with Red Lion, if you are an r, &R member, you get a deeper discount than you would if you went and booked um, directly on Expedia. But Expedia also has their own member direct. So um, 
if you are loyal to Expedia and you rack up more Expedia points than you do Red Lion points, then you're going to, um, of course, book directly with Expedia because it's a better deal for you because you can redeem those points. It's like uh, airlines, same mm -hmm. thing, same mm -hmm. concept. And so what if you're not a member of any of that and you were just a member of the general public going mm -hmm. online and would you get a better rate for the room if you go uh, directly or, okay. Not okay. typically, no, it's about okay. the same. You will see, um, you know, word of caution. You, if you Google, if you go on Red Lion, um, if you go on Google and see all the things that come up, you will see one-offs uh, websites that are, um, you know, book direct or, you know, reservations.com or things that aren't necessarily reputable, um, uh, online travel agencies. And so I, if it doesn't sound familiar, I wouldn't book it because what you're going to do is you're going to get through the process and then they're going to tack on $50 at the end of it. And it, anyone can take your information and it's called selling an onward distribution. So if we have a contract negotiated with, um, I'm getting really granular here, but if you have a contract negotiated with an FIT, which is a foreign individual travel agent, they can take your information and sell it in onward distribution and, and post that rate. But then at the end of the day, when you are finished with your reservation, it's really the same thing. So it's like a hmm. bait and switch type of thing. And we don't have any control over that. Hmm. Interesting. Um, yeah, there's, a, there's, it's very, um, you can spend all day trying to, um, develop a rate strategy and make sure that your rates are positioned correctly, um, especially in larger markets. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Lena I'm, had a question and also Angela. Yeah. Angela's is, I'm. Uh, what is the expected completion date? Um, so for the interior of the hotel will be done before summer of this year the exterior i'm i mean this is a um three to five year project in my mind um you know we've are in the very early stages of um development um we haven't done gone through any of the permitting processes um our process with the city or anything like that um and there's some um you know there's some hoops that we have to jump through um we, there used to be a gas station on the corner of Lincoln and Railroad, so we've got some soil um, samples that we have to draw from. We also, you know, um, have to um, take a look at, you know, moving um, or cutting down some trees and some potential dirt movement, so that that always raises some red flags. So um, I would say that the exterior to what the um, drawings depict is definitely three to five years out. Okay. Great, thanks. Um, so, and we kind of answered this already. We do offer comparable rates to Expedia and um, Hotels.com, um, and and that is um, in booking direct. Um, to her question, it's frustrating because the front desk staff or reservation staff is not able to match the rate. Um, usually, um, you know what we like to do is if you can come to the front desk and you can show a rate that's cheaper online because sometimes that does happen because we've got interfaces and um, rates being pushed from different platforms and that sort of thing. So if it does happen, um, the front desk is empowered to make that decision at, at um, our hotel, but that doesn't mean that that's going to happen everywhere. Um, the max capacity for our conference space, it depends on the set that you're in. Um, so we're hosting um, a 4PA um a town hall meeting and went set theater style and that can hold up to 250. Um, if you're doing like a, a function for um, a holiday party or a reception, um, depending off it's plated or if it's buffet, but usually for about 180 to 200 people is, is what um, the max capacity is up there. But we've definitely gotten creative um, and doing a couple of different things um, with some different companies that we've worked with in the past. And we have one coming up in February where um, the buffet will be downstairs in the peninsula room where their function is upstairs in the ballroom. Um, and so trying to make it so it, it works um, for the client that we're working with. So if you're looking for meeting space, we are definitely flexible.
Any other questions? No. Looks like we've got them covered, I believe. What did you say what the max capacity for your conference room is? That was just um what I was speaking to. It just kind of oh, depends sorry. on the yeah, the set of what you're in. Got it. Yeah. And Donya, you have a space downstairs that's off the bar. Mm -hmm. How how big is that? And is that that is able to get rented out, correct? Yes. Yep. Um, cause I'm going to email you about that cause I've got a function coming up. And, um, so what's the space capacity on that? If you're looking to have like a dinner in there, um, it's about 70 people can fit in there at rounds. Um, if you're looking for, um, having a, um, like a classroom function where you're having a presenter and a speaker, um, it's tight, but it can do about a hundred. Um, and then we have options to obviously flow out into the, the restaurant area as well. And I'll get a better rate if I email you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of okay. course. Okay, expect yeah. one soon. Okay, thank you. Yeah. My apologies, I'm but I'm driving in today. Donya, did you mention the time frame from start to finish that you're expecting? Um, so the the meeting room um, renovation is taking place right now. The the hotel guest room renovation will be complete by the summer. And then the major renovations for the exterior of the property is probably a three to five year timeline. Thank you. Did you want to go back through any of those last uh, slides off the PDF deck, Danya? Um, I, I didn't send you the other. Um, I can send those to you. Colleen and um, we can send them out to this group if we want. Okay. I apologize that this is, didn't go. <clears throat> I'm embarrassed that it didn't go how it was supposed to go. That's all right. We know you are dealing with um, a cold. And we appreciate you coming on even though you're sick today. So it looks like um, Angela, do you have a question you want to ask? No. No, just thank Colleen? You. Yes. Colleen, it's Lori. I'm since I'm, you know, remotely um, logging in and I'm driving, did Donya mention anything about the crab festival and how that this will be affected, this event? So we're working closely with Scott Nagel and his um team um on trying to make this work um and trying to make sure that the crab vessel continues obviously we want um that is an integral part of the success of port angeles and the of, um, festivals and events that take place downtown um so um i've had a um preliminary meeting showing scott the plans um both scott and michael mcquare and um, have seen the plans um in a couple of weeks we're meeting with the architect uh, the landscape architect and Scott and his the rest of his team, as well as my boss um, and potentially the owners of the property, um, so we can make sure that we're all on the same page. Got it. Uh, I did have a quick question too. Don't and I don't know that you mentioned this when you were talking about the available space for rent for meeting space, but there I think there used to be a room by the pool. Is that one still available? And what's the capacity there? Um, that there was a room by the pool, but it, it's now office space. Okay. So. Can okay. I rent an office space? Yeah. Yes. It's a, it's a entertaining office space to say the least. <laughs> so, um, Danya, I see with the landscaping plans that a lot of the parking will be eliminated. How is the hotel addressing that? I assume there's still going to be a parking need if a certain number of slots generally. How are you going to address that? So um, the parking um, to the east um, for the hotel is going to be unchanged. It's really just affecting the parking um, 
there off Lincoln Street. Um, I can't remember the exact number of, of spaces that we have on property. Um, it will be reduced, but we'll meet the minimum requirement. I want to say it's like 30 spaces that will be, um, is the reduction, um, but I don't mm -hmm. know what that is off the top of my head. Um, so that's, it's kind of up in the air and really it's not, um, that's really only going to impact us a couple of times a year. Um, it, it's one is going to impact obviously the crab fest if it, the design of that. But when um, we have other events that use the parking lot for um, you know the Mustang Cougar show, for example, that's downtown, it could potentially impact that. Um, but there's still, um, I don't think it'll be that big of an impact to be honest. Mm -hmm. Okay. And is it something that the, um, the Port Angeles Chamber and their work around parking generally for the downtown core that they're uh, integrating that piece into the whole uh, parking question, or is the city looking at that? It really hasn't been brought up. Okay, so. I see Nathan just popped on. Colleen, I'll, I'm happy to jump in. Um, I, I just want to say first, we are so appreciative to the Red Lion for making this investment. It's a really big change for our community and so important to the revitalization that we're seeing throughout downtown. And this is one of our major projects that's been moved forward as part of the overall Elevate PA vision that the chamber put together that entails over 140 million in investment. So this is a big deal. I just want to share that um, the city has been engaged with the Red Lions design team on this, and we've been extremely impressed with the creativity and thoughtfulness that's gone into the placemaking for this new project. It's really cool to see all the different thought that's been put into it, and we're excited. Uh, relative to the parking, I think long term, we're going to need to focus on both a east end of downtown parking structure as well as a west end parking structure in downtown and with the goal to eliminate the surface parking areas in between. Um, as you know, we've been working with Eric Dupar on a parking structure on the west end of downtown and hopefully we see that move forward fairly quickly. But the end solution for parking really ought to be two separate structures, one on each side of downtown rather than trying to do all the surface lots that we see today. But Danya, thanks again for being here this morning. Thank you, Nathan. <clears throat> Great. All right, uh, Rebecca, you had a follow-up question? Sorry, I meant to put my mic on. I didn't mean to. So anyway, Danya, you mentioned something um, at the chamber when you were feeling much better and um, were full of vivacity and enthusiasm I'm sorry. Um, about those. No, you're. This is so great. You mentioned something about the trees along Front Street as you're mm -hmm. coming down into town. I wasn't sure. I, I couldn't remember exactly how that ended or what the status is of that. So that's something that we're going to have to work in partnership with the city because there's some right of ways and easements along the property line there. So, but that is something that is definitely on our, um, on the agenda to um, not only for this project, but really, um, you know, as my, I'll put on my chamber hat, <clears throat> um, you know, when you come into Port Angeles and seeing that view out over the hotel and into the strait, you know, when the trees aren't you know, cut right there. You can't see that. So um, we definitely need to do that to um, improve the the landscape of, of seeing Port Angeles and it's um, the view it offers, right? So that's something that we've got to work with the city on. Um, so hopefully we can, I'm sure Nathan and I can come to an agreement on what we need to do there, right, Nathan? <laughs> No, absolutely. And it's something we hear a lot about and we need some better long-term uh, plantings in those locations rather than the sporadic growth of alders that that may not last and may create instability on that bluff. Okay. I wonder what, I should know this, but isn't there a, um, isn't there a creek that comes out right in that area? What's the nearest creek? I know Valley Creek's over to the west. Peter's Creek. 
Peabody Creek, I think, isn't it? Yeah. So have you looked at, um, you know, the, the interest of, uh, of tribes and uh, I know Future Wise has got projects where they're proposing to daylight these different creeks so they're not in culverts. <clears throat> Is that, have you looked at that and how that could impact things? Because I know if that, if the proposal for Valley Creek is incredibly um, impactful uh, over just west of the port building. I mean, they want to close down Valley Creek Street or Valley Street and, you know, purchase all sorts of properties for it to become a park, to daylight it and take up a bunch of the land at the Marine Trade Center that we're looking at developing. <clears throat> And I just wanted to bring that to your attention and how could that potentially impact your development plans? I don't know that it's gonna um, impact our development plans. Um, Cause I, I mean, it, Peabody Creek is not um, on our property there, but um, mm -hmm. I know it will impact our occupancy based on what the current plans are from the state that I've seen. I don't know how up to date those are. Um, the um, and I, I think Nathan can probably talk more about that than I can. Um, I have, I haven't been following that closely. I'm more concerned about the closure of the Hood Canal Bridge right now, um, than the Valley, Valley Creek and Peabody Creek culvert projects. Um, but, um, the owners did went, um, look at purchasing the land to the east of the property, but there's um, really not much that can be done with that property. So um, that was a discussion of the development, but um, that part has um, kind of moved to the side and not really being looked at any longer. Okay, got it. So it comes out, I know I'm looking at the map right now and I see it uh, basically intersects at, uh, what is that, Race Street and, um, first and then somehow it ends up going out nathan do you know where that is that it does that that it comes out yeah peabody peabody actually comes um out into lincoln street and opening up peabody creek was something that we explored i want to say back in 2011 when we were doing initial planning for the waterfront redevelopment project and and ultimately it was it was determined to be infeasible because you're talking about such a long corridor of Lincoln Street that that creek is under. It's just such a major undertaking to do anything with it. Plus, you're looking at an arterial street that's also designated as Highway 101. It's extremely complex. And I, I know that um, FutureWise also looked at Peabody Creek as a possibility and steered away from it for that reason. So um, it and I haven't been in all the discussions with Red Lion, um, but I don't believe there's any intent to make modifications to Peabody Creek. Okay. Yeah, we had at the port, we had a presentation by them yesterday and they their words were, every creek is going to have to be daylighted. So eventually, um, so we'll see that it was very problematic what they were proposing, that's for sure. Okay, well, um, uh, Donya, we really appreciate you coming and joining us today, even though you are under the weather and um, all the important things that you and your organization do for not just Port Angeles, but the broader county as well. So thank you so much. And um, do you have any last words you wanna share? Uh, just thank you and sorry it didn't go as we planned in the beginning um, and sorry it wasn't um, quite as fun as the chamber presentation I did it um, but anyways um, thank you very much for having me and if anyone has any questions please don't hesitate to reach out um, I am happy to share my email and my phone number if anyone does want to discuss any further yeah go ahead and put that in the chat if you would so if people want to get that they can Again, thank you, and um, uh, we're going to call it a morning. Bye-bye, everyone. <laughs>